Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, former vice presidential candidate Pastor Tunde Bakare says he stands by the message in an old video about his political ambition, which recently resurfaced on social media. Men of the Department of State Services arrest journalist, activist and editorial board member of Premium Times, Chido Onoma, in Abuja on his return from Spain. 80-year-old mother of former Super Eagles coach Samson Siasia regains freedom after two months in a kidnapper's den. And the Conservative People's Party, led by former Austrian Chancellor Sebastian Kurz, as one of the country's parliamentary elections. Lagos-based preacher and senior pastor of the Latin Rain Assembly, Tunde Bakare, has cleared the air over the widely spread notion deduced from an old message he preached about his ambition of becoming Nigeria's next president. Pastor Bakare, today at his church in the Ogba area of Lagos, says the online video was an old message he preached, which is now being used to drive an agenda about the current situation surrounding the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. The preacher explains that God recently showed him a vision about Nigeria of a rainbow indicating a reset across the land. Every man will care about what bothers him most or bites him hardest. My concern presently is that come rain, come shine, the Vice President Professor Yemi Shibajo must not be disgraced and humiliated out of office except he has truly and flagrantly violated his oath of office, which I find difficult to believe. I fear for those who rejoice at the fall of others. Those who sow such seed are mindful of the consequential definite law of harvest. I truly grieve for my brother and pray for God's goodness, mercy, and grace to surround him at this moment. May the present overwhelming challenges trials, afflictions, and all guilt by associations be resolved in such a manner that God's name will be praised and glorified in him at the end, whether or not he remains as VP to the end of his term. God showed me vision for Nigeria. I saw a rainbow across Nigeria with the word boldly written, reset. Somebody may say, so what do, we, what do you say about the 16th presidency video? It is the true expression of my political aspiration. I'm an equivocal and unambiguous about that. In other news, the Department of State Services has arrested a journalist activist, Mr. Chido Onuma, who is a columnist with an online news medium. Mr. Onuma, a journalist and author, is said to have been arrested at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja Sunday evening. It is reported that Mr. Onuma had just returned to Nigeria from Spain, where he had obtained a PhD in communication studies. The columnist is author of a book titled, We're All Biafrans. In a telephone conversation, the public relations officer of the service, Dr. Peter Afunaya, neither confirmed nor denied the arrest of Mr. Onuma. After two months in captivity, the 80-year-old mother of former Super Eagles coach Samson Tiasia has regained her freedom. She was released after a ransom was paid to her abductors, though the family is silent on the amount paid. Mrs. Beauty Tiasia was abducted on July 15th in her hometown of Odoni in Sagwama, local government area of Bielsa State. This is the second time in four years that she has been kidnapped. The first time was in 2015 when she was held for 13 days before a ransom was paid. She's asking the Nigerian police to live up to its responsibility and ensure that the space of kidnapping is reduced. That day they can't carry me. I did for my heart. They sleep. So the people, they come with me to come outside, come outside. Say, wait up now. Say, come outside. 
Come outside another year. They start to learn how they tell say, oh, now don't come again. Wait on our deal now. Wait to only me night day for this old day. I'm on down and they can't carry me. Say, so shut up your mouth to say, come outside. Come on, spot this door them. They enter. Now they go drum, come outside. Now I see them, they drag go with that uh, motor road. They're not carrying motor leg with it, gone, gone, gone. I said, make it go in the they carry me go. Go water side and they carry me go. And then they do bush. And then they give me food. The tablet, make a drink, they give me, oh. and then they beat me, I not talk lie. Oh. And yesterday, afternoon, and they carry me. I know the place, far, far place. Oh. They come village, one village. Then they make it. Tell me, me are the people. Three, me are the two people. They enter the flying boat and sleep. They make sleep. Go. They place, then they, they make go drop and they reach there. That they tell and say, Oh, yeah, make on come, come outside, come outside. <coughs> and the three people now they come outside. Say, so make it go. Say, so make it go. Interesting experience there. 19 pregnant girls, under eight children, and a day old baby have been rescued from a makeshift detention camp in the Kotun area of Lagos. The victims, some of whom are between the ages of 13 and 28, were allegedly lured to Lagos with a promise of jobs. A sting operation by police undercover officers of the Sherry Oshun Division around the Kotun area of Lagos. After several weeks of monitoring and information gathering, the efforts finally paid off with the arrest of 19 pregnant girls, some of whom even came to the camp with children. All the victims have stories to tell, but it is double jeopardy for this 23-year-old Hope Bright from River State who came to Lagos with a baby and also carrying another pregnancy. As I need the, the woman check me, so dry, my parents started to kick me. From there, they said that we born. I'm in the neighbor complete three days. They took me to the hospital. God help me, I deliver that child. <laughs> My baby died to a student. <laughs> Where is the baby you came with? They collect the baby from me. I do not see that child again. Also in custody are the caregivers, the nurse to the syndicate, and three hotel operators were the leader of the gang frequently lodge those ready for delivery. When the ma and one of his friends brought the lady, Olushi by name, so I told the ma that, I told the smart hotel that I'm scared. I don't know these people before, moreover, they are pregnant. He said I should not be scared. If there's anything, I should come and call him. At the spot, Madam, search on my hotel. Uh, they discovered four women with pregnancy and one baby. These two bedroom apartments on number 14 at Desaido of Ayonwale Street in Ikotu is the camp. A day-old baby ready for delivery is discovered from one of the hotels. The mastermind of the alleged baby factory, simply called Madame Oluchi, is currently at large. My auntie in our Kwaibum tell me I should go to, to Putakot. He get one woman that can buy the baby. If I deliver the baby, she will buy it and give me money.
We are innocent. We don't know anything about the woman. They only, some of them will only tell you about work. When you came to the place, they will seize your phone. You will know have means of communication again. What I have to say is that they should release us and we can find any of our destination and go back to our various houses. For now, these victims sleep, feed, and get medication at the cost of the officers at the police division. They can only hope that help could come for them to be reunited with their families. To the update of another equally harrowing story. Following the shocking revelation of an illegal Islamic school in Rigasa area of Kaduna Metropolis, over 200 students have been handed over to the state government by the police authorities with 140 of them already reunited with their families. The Kaduna State Commissioner for Human Resources and Social Development, Mrs. Hafsat Baba, who gave the update on the incident, said the remaining victims, including 77 children and 113 adults, were taken to a secured facility at the Mando Hajj camp in the state capital for proper profiling, while others who were sick have been taken to the hospital for treatment. Scars that may never heal, not just of the body, but the mind as well. The discovery of what was perceived as an Islamic school in Kaduna State that turned out to be a torture center of sorts is startling. The school is reported to have been established in the year 2000. It is disturbing that people can be kept well hidden for such a long time while being exposed to various inhuman treatments. Many discipline of beating, a person will not do something that's supposed to get him beaten, but get him maltreatment or beating always. He's having his own, his own orientation that he's trying to put in us. Because even as we are there, he was telling us not to be moving with slippers. Not, it's not good to be bathing, it's not good to be eating meat, it's not good to be using all these gadgets that, that we are using, like computer, phones, and other, and other things like that. And all what he's saying us to be absent ourselves from, he's all using them. But the parents enrolled their wards with the knowledge of the goings on there. This man had three children in the school. His reason for placing them there was to straighten them out and reduce the amount of mouths he had to feed. I took them to the school because they are very stubborn. I have over 40 children, so I brought three of my sons here. If I buy a bag of rice, it lasts for just five days. And if I leave them at home or any school that will make them to be coming home daily, the children will start taking drugs. No one knows for sure how the children would have fared if they were given the opportunity to develop in a normal environment. But that chance may have been lost to time. The Commissioner for Human Services and Social Development visits the rescued at the Hajj camp where the documentation is being prepared. The ordeal is broken to her in tears. We are doing collectively ensuring that we're going to map all those places and uh, I'm sure these places are not registered because if they're registered they have to conform with the world standard and the uh, rehabilitation center is a center where when you're rehabilitating somebody the atmosphere should be conducive the env environment should be good there is no um, torture or uh, chaining people and also traumatizing them and so on. For 19 years hundreds have passed through these walls and others like it experiencing similar treatment that may have shaped their minds about religious fanaticism and social interactions. As the government beams its searchlight to expose religious torture schools, it would do well to plan a rehabilitation process to ensure none of the false negativity is transmitted to the larger society. In part two after the break, Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo asked citizens to expect a new Nigeria following the wrestling of power and protection from enemies of the nation. Please stay with us.